Geralt, is that you? How are things? I found Alvin. Alvin? Wait a minute. Triss wanted me to do something, hammered it into my head for an hour. Ah, oh, yeah. I have a dimeridium amulet for him. Dandelion, I can't trust you to do anything. Is that so? Well, I just remembered I had a package for you. A package? I don't know. Something. But I might have lost it. Quit pouting, Dandelion. What do you have for me? Fine. I have a letter to you from your lover. Shani, hand it over. May I help you? I have questions. Ask, Traveller. What's special about this settlement? Murky waters. We live in seclusion. Tobias Hoffman leads us. Know, too, that our ancestors once inhabited the underwater city. The underwater city? Lake waters engulfed the underwater city. Some say the gods were angered by debauchery. Now the Vodianoi... Vodianoi? An ancient underwater race. We used to respect each other, but relations have worsened. Tell me about them. They appeared long ago, before the city was engulfed. They live in underwater palaces. They produce tools and baubles, including the famous Stones of Is, supposedly magical. Their warriors, though fierce in battle, seldom attack on land. They chiefly drive away treasure hunters. An underwater race of rational beings. Interesting. No challengers? Sometimes I prefer to be a peasant.
Greetings, sir. Spacious tavern. What? You think everything's small in the country? I meant no offense. How can I help? I saw your notice. Ah, I need wyvern eggs for my famous omelets. Here are three. Wonderful. Here's your coin. How can I help? Where's the village mayor? There's a large hut in the village where the mayor spends his time. But he lives in another large hut, so... I'll find it. How can I help? Any interesting news? A wedding, that's what. The mayor's daughter, Elena, is marrying a townsman called Julian. He's staying here at my inn. One thing. Yes? You must know some interesting stories. Sure. I'm an innkeeper. <clears throat> Long ago, in a valley far away, lived a girl. She was a true princess, sorceress, and witcheress. All three? Isn't that a bit much? Don't interrupt. You want to hear the story or not? I won't interrupt again. A story about destiny might prove useful, Witcher. She was born a princess who wanted for nothing, had loving parents and a grandmother who was a great queen. She lived in palaces guarded by hundreds of knights. Everyone thought she'd become a powerful queen, but fate had other plans. Her parents died. Enemies butchered her grandmother and took the kingdom. Still, the princess survived. Her fate became bound to one she, she but war broke out and death fate when what happened? A peasant? I see. All but one her name One thing. Yes. You must know some interesting stories. Sure. I'm an innkeeper. <clears throat> Long ago, in a valley far away lived a girl. She was a true princess, sorceress, and witcheress. All three? Isn't that a bit much? Don't interrupt. You want to hear the story or not? I won't interrupt again. A story about destiny might prove useful, Witcher. She was born a princess who wanted for nothing, had loving parents and a grandmother who was a great queen. She lived in palaces guarded by hundreds of knights. Everyone thought she'd become a powerful queen, but fate had other plans. Her parents died. Enemies butchered her grandmother and took the kingdom. Still, the princess survived. Her fate became bound to one particular witcher. She gained a new family at Caer Moran, the hold of the witchers. She learned to fight, yet destiny once again made noise. The lass had magical talent, she was a source. The witchers feared the uncontrolled power of a source and needed a sorceress to assist them. She studied arcane magic. The sorceress loved a witcher and the two adopted the girl. She was truly happy and could have become a powerful sorceress. But war broke out and fate separated the family. Aggrieved, the lass disavowed magic and became a huntress learning to love killing death followed her everyone she'd loved had died only the witcher and the sorceress denied death's calling fate cast her to foreign shores yet she returned the worst assassin tailed her yet she emerged victorious agents of all kingdoms pursued her yet none caught her when she killed all her enemies and peace descended upon the world she rejoined the Witcher and Sorceress, only to have destiny sneer at her again. What happened? A peasant, unskilled in arms, killed the Witcher. The Sorceress died trying to revive him. The girl could do nothing, for she disavowed magic. So the Princess, who would not rule, the Witcheress, who fought humans, 
and the sorceress who cast no spells used her power as a means to leave this world. I sense you haven't told all. All but one. Her name was Cyrilla. What's that matter? Farewell. Fighting or watching? Greetings, Whitey. Got money? Wanna fight? Should be an interesting fight. Ready? Bring it on. Hit me, Chicky! Who wants to get slapped? No challengers. You're not bad. It's no shame losing to the white-haired one. Who wants to get slapped? I heard you beat Butterbean and Fat Fred. And Gablada. I'm looking for a worthy opponent. Then welcome. They call me The Rock. Sounds ominous. Wanna fight a real champion? What's the wager? 500 orins. I need to prepare. No challengers? 500 orins. I'm in. I'm itching to hit someone. He wants to get slapped. Your mother sucks to watch cock. No challengers? I heard you beat Butterbean and Fat Fred. And Gablada. I'm looking for a worthy opponent. Then welcome. They call me The Rock. Sounds ominous. Wanna fight a real champion? What's the wager? 500 orins. I'm in. I ate them. Who's next? Your mother sacks dwarf Your cock. mother sacks dwarf cock. Who wants to get slapped? I heard you beat and Gablada. I'm looking. Then welcome. Sounds on. Wanna fight a? What's the wager? Five hundred orins. I'm in. Challengers? Who wants to get slapped? Ha! 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 
Who wants to get slapped? No challenges. Who wants to get slapped? Seems I have no worthy successors. We'll see about that. Return tomorrow and lose another 500 orins. Indeed, the bliss obliges you. How can I help? Any rooms? Five orins. Challenge? You're my 
Five seconds to watch it. Who wants to get slapped? Five hundred orins. I'm in. I'm itching to it somewhere. Congratulations, champ. Before you collect your reward, know another fight awaits. Who with? Go to the swamp, where you'll meet the Nameless One. Choose your reward. I'll take the coin. Five hundred orins is yours. Twist of words. Why do you s come from afar? See no signs of winning. Can I help you? Yes. So, you like to gamble? I love gambling. Female gamblers are rare. So are interesting men. If you don't care to play, leave. Yes?
Yes. I was on my way. Greetings, Witcher. I've heard a lot of good things about your kind. That's rare. Usually people treat me like a leper. Not in my house. When I was a child, I heard many tales of a Witcher who saved my grandfather's life in exchange for a silver penny. That must have been a while back. I'm Geralt. Oh, yes. In the olden days. I'm Julian. It's a pleasure. 
I've taken Beringer's job. Decided to handle this problem myself. Listen, I'm in the middle of planning my wedding. You have no idea how much time it takes. Come back later. Tell me the story of your grandfather. Grandfather, may Melitelli watch over his soul, had a plot of land. A piece of a rocky, frozen valley in northern Kovir, and a deserted coal mine with no coal. Grandfather always said that a treasure was concealed in the valley. He worked hard every year to discover that treasure. Initially, many gladly took the jobs he offered and helped. But soon it became clear that Grandfather had gone mad, that there was no treasure. When he was 47, had rheumatism and a collection of Bobolak scalps above his mantle, he was overcome with grief and went outside. He began cursing the heavens, berating all the known gods in the foulest language he knew. The gods answered. There was a terrible rumble, and an avalanche descended on the valley. Grandfather regained consciousness, burrowed out of the snow, and looked around to see something that would change his life. The entire valley was glimmering strangely, glimmering so beautifully, that he nearly didn't see the beast coming towards him with a heavy gait. Grandfather fled, bending over once to pick up a strangely glimmering stone. In short, he escaped. Descending from the mountains, he encountered a witcher who agreed to slay the monster in exchange for a silver penny. They returned to the valley, and the witcher slew the beast. He could not help noticing the wealth laying in that valley, yet he demanded nothing beyond the penny promised him earlier. Grandfather grew to trust him, and knew that sooner or later someone or something would come along and want to take his treasure, for the treasure in the valley was immense, Geralt. Diamond deposits that took years to extract. They became partners. The Witcher watched the workers, killed monsters, drove off bandits, and Grandfather managed the business. He's a legend in Kovir, and my family is wealthy and respected. That's the whole story. I'm here about the notice. I'll buy any basilisk hides you have. Reptile skin shoes are in fashion in Vizima, you know. I have three hides. Let me have a look. Undamaged? Excellent. Here's your reward. What's up? Soon I'll marry the village mayor's daughter, Alina. We're planning our wedding as we speak. I wanted to ask about Alvin. He needs a caretaker who is knowledgeable about magic. And neither I nor my future spouse are suited to be his guardian. I see. You should train him to be a witcher. You know not what you ask. For the time being, I'll keep an eye on him. Geralt?